Hey everyone, Brian from Sue Generis Brewing here. It is Sunday, April 14th, 2024, and it's time to start season two of the 50 meter beer project. So if you're new to my channel, or if you joined recently, you may not have seen this, but last year I engaged in a almost year long project where I produced a beer entirely from stuff here from my farm. So I planted uh, two different types of barley, grew those over the summer and then malted them in the fall. I grew some hops on the property. I isolated some wild yeast. In fact, I isolated those from the barley itself. And I even used water from an old artisanal well that's just over the hill behind me here. So I'm repeating this project this year, but with a number of different changes. The first change will be most obvious to those of you who saw last year's project. And that is instead of doing a video every week to two weeks, I'm just gonna do larger, more summary style videos, maybe once a month or maybe a little more frequently than that when things are busy. As much fun as I had making those uh, frequent videos, it unfortunately takes a lot of time and I know what my schedule is gonna be like this summer and there's just no way that I think I can do 18 videos again uh, over the course of one summer. So not as many videos. They'll probably be a little bit longer though because obviously I'm gonna have to cover a bit more. There are a few other changes to the project itself. Uh, the biggest one is the barley that I'm growing. So last year I grew two varieties. The first variety I grew was something called Harrington's. Uh, this is a strain of barley from the 80s and 90s uh, that many of my uncles uh, produced on their farm. So as a child, I often spent my time working on those farms and working with that barley. So I grew it sort of out of nostalgia, but the thing with it is it is a modern malting variety, which means if everything goes perfectly, the malt that I produce is the same as the malt I would buy from RAR or from another one of the big producers. And I, if I'm going to go through the trouble of growing my own grain, I should grow something special. So the other barley I grew last year is something called Bear. And Bear is a 12 to 1300 year old variety of barley. Uh, it's believed to have been spread across Northern Europe by the Vikings. Uh, and it almost went extinct. If it wasn't for a few whiskey producers on the Orkney Islands, it would have gone extinct. But they've kept it going. Uh, and so I grew that last year as well. And this year, all I've planted is bare barley. Uh, you know, again, if I'm gonna grow something, it might as well be something special, something I, I can't just buy from a maltster. And so 100% bare this year, uh, hopefully it pans out. Uh, last year we got pretty good yield, so I have high hopes there. I made a few other changes as well to the barley growing. Uh, if you saw my videos last year, you'll know that I had my barley rows too far apart and I had my plants planted too densely together and that hurt my yield a little bit. So this year I tried to fix that uh, through a couple of different things. Uh, the first thing is I made a bigger version of this, but I, I made uh, these things here that cut my rows into the ground for the barley at a 15 centimeter spacing roughly six inches, which is optimal spacing for barley. Uh, and thanks to Alistair who gave me this idea. Uh, he made one of these out of plywood, not 3D printed, uh, for his barley crop and it worked really well last year. So I copied your idea, uh, but I 3D printed mine because why wouldn't I? Now, the only problem I ran into with these is I made the depth of these teeth basically the maximum depth you would ever want to plant barley, which on the surface sounds like a good idea. Uh, but what I didn't take into account was how much dirt would fall back into the grooves. And so I ended up actually with my barley planted a little bit on the shallow side. Uh, and so because of that, uh, we had some storms the week after I planted and I was a little worried I was going to lose a lot of the seed that was going to wash away. But uh, it started coming up today. I literally planted a week ago today. Uh, so we're starting to see some growth today and it looks like it's okay. Uh, but in hindsight, these should have been just a tiny bit deeper so that I could have a little bit deeper of a planting depth. Now, last year I tried to 3D print um, some seed drills, which would place the seeds at an appropriate uh, separation. And I spent all winter making modifications to that, doing those kinds of things. And despite a lot of time and a lot of 3D printer filament spent on that, never did get it to work. Uh, so this year what I went with instead is one of these seed shakers. Um, basically they can do different diameter seeds. You just twist the, the ring into position for the size seed that you want. And then you hold them level and shake it out and the seeds come down the chute and drop into the grooves. And that worked surprisingly well. Uh, the seeds are still probably a little bit denser than what would be optimum, but they're not nearly as overplanted as they were last year, which should again help with yields because they're not gonna be competing as much for nutrients as they were last year. 
So the barley itself, as I said, it has started coming up. We're starting to see some signs of life there, so that's good. Uh, hopefully in a week or two we'll have, you know, decent sized plants and we'll have a good idea of what germinated and if there's any uh, loose spots. The barley crop I planted this year, I also planted a much larger area of barley, um, three times the size of last year roughly, so it's uh, two and a half meters by 20 meters in size. Um, so again, trying to get that yield up, because last year with the area that I planted, I had just enough to make 12 liters of beer. I'd really like to get two batches of beer out of this year. Uh, I have some ideas of what I want to do with that, should I get enough barley for it, but we'll wait until the end of the year before we get into that stuff. On the hop side, uh, I'm still growing the Canadian red vines that I was growing last year. They are just starting to emerge. Uh, yesterday was the first day I saw any shoots and they're already double the length they were yesterday. Uh, so the hops look like they're coming back quite strongly. Um, but, you know, it's going to be a while until we know how well they're doing. But I suspect that this year they're going to do quite well. Uh, last year they did blow down in a large storm, so I'm hoping to get some better twine this year to put them up with. Um, but again, that's a problem uh, for next video. That's not a problem for today. So I think that wraps up this first video. Um, obviously we're early in the spring, so we're still in the very early stages of this project. There's not a whole lot to talk about. Uh, but things are off to a good start. We have beautiful sunny days ahead of us here. We've got a bit of rain coming, so stuff should start growing really strongly. And I'll see you in a couple of weeks when I do the next video. Until then.